Okay, welcome to chapter one. In this chapter, we're going to go over several concepts that we're going to use throughout the semester. So it's really important that you understand these concepts as we go through them. If you have any questions, be sure to use the discussion boards in order to ask those questions. So remember, financial accounting is concerned with reporting financial information to external parties, but managerial accounting is focused on those internal parties, the managers. So we need to understand what management needs in accounting information in order to make their decisions. So management has to have the information necessary to formulate plans, control operations, and make decisions. And that's the type of information that we need to be able to provide in managerial accounting. So the first concept we're going to talk about is cost classification. Costs can be classified in a variety of different ways. We assign costs to various cost objects, which is anything we're interested in having cost information for. So a cost object could be a particular product that we produce. It could be a particular division of the company. It could be a particular area that we operate in. So any item that we want to have additional cost information for could be considered a cost object. The other reason we need to understand cost classification is because it helps us account for costs in manufacturing companies. So manufacturing companies incur different types of costs. We're going to need to track those different types of costs because they're treated differently on the financial statements, which brings us to number three, preparing the financials. And then understanding how costs behave can also be very useful in predicting future costs, which is a main focus of managerial accounting because we look to the future. And then, of course, we need cost classification information in order to help us make better business decisions. So the first type of cost classification we're going to look at is the concept of direct versus indirect cost. A direct cost is a cost that can be easily and conveniently traced to a unit of product or other cost object. So an example would be direct material and direct labor. Of course, that really doesn't help if you don't know what direct material and direct labor is. Imagine an iPhone being manufactured. An example of direct material would be the glass that goes into the iPhone. It can be directly traced to that cost object, the phone. Likewise, the person that glues the glass onto the phone would be their wages would be considered direct labor. And again, you could directly trace the amount of time that they spend producing that one phone and allocate that cost to the cost object. These are not the only examples of direct cost. It really depends on the cost object. What are you trying to apply cost to? So if a cost object, let's say, was a Five Guys store in Dover, and we were trying to allocate cost as being either direct or indirect for the Five Guys store in Dover, the advertising that Five Guys does on the national level would not be able to be directly traced to Five Guys in Dover because it applies to all Five Guys franchises around the country. So that would be considered an indirect cost because it cannot be easily and conveniently traced to the unit of product or to the cost object. In our example, the Five Guys Dover store. However, the store manager's salary for Five Guys in Dover would be a direct cost because it can be directly traced to the Dover store. If we get rid of the Dover store, we'll get rid of the Dover store manager. That's an easy way to determine if something is direct or not. If we can get rid of the cost object, and by doing so, we get rid of the costs we're discussing, it means it's a direct cost. Another example would be the cost of french fries at the Dover store. Again, that would be a direct cost because if we get rid of the Dover store, we'll get rid of the cost of french fries associated with the Dover store. If we change up our cost object to make it different divisions within the Dover store, let's think of the fries versus the burger division. 
So the store manager's salary then would become an indirect cost to the fry division because you can't directly trace the store manager's cost to the fry division because it relates to the entire store. However, the fries would still be a direct cost to the fry division because if you get rid of the fry division, you'll get rid of the cost of the fries. So the bottom line is you need to ask yourself, can I eliminate or reduce the cost if I eliminate the cost object? And if the answer is yes, most likely it's a direct cost. If the answer is no, it's indirect. The indirect cost example given here is manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead would be all the things that we incur in order to run a factory that isn't directly traceable to a product. So going back to my Apple iPhone example, the iPhones are produced in a manufacturing plant and Apple pays rent on that plant and utilities on that plant and also has depreciation on the equipment and building itself. None of those things can be directly traced to a particular iPhone. If we get rid of one iPhone, as an example, we can't get rid of the factory rent. We can't get rid of the factory utilities. However, we can't make iPhones without incurring those factory rent and utility costs. So it's still a production cost, but it's not directly traceable to a particular iPhone. So those manufacturing costs related to the factory rent, the factory utilities, are considered manufacturing overhead. Basically what we do is we put all those costs into a pool and we'll have to figure out a way to allocate them to our products later on. And we'll learn that in chapter two and three. So indirect costs effectively are common costs. They're indirect costs that are incurred to support several different cost objects. For example, the factory that we're producing the iPhones in might also be producing iPads and Macs and other things. So again, those are costs of the factory rent, utilities, etc., are all used in order to support a number of different products being made within that factory. So we can't directly trace them easily to individual cost objects. Next thing we're going to do is discuss examples of the three basic types of manufacturing cost categories, which we've already mentioned them. They are direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. Direct materials are any major component of the final product that we can directly trace to it. So if we're making an automobile, an example would be the radio installed in the automobile. If we're making an iPhone, I already mentioned the glass that we put into the iPhone would be an example of a direct material. It's got to be easily traceable to that product. If it's something minor, like potentially the little speck of solder that goes into an iPhone production, you're not going to spend the time and money to trace each individual drop of solder. So it has to be conveniently traced. So it's not that you could do it if you really wanted to, it has to be easy to do in order for it to be considered a direct material. So in your head, I just want you to think it's gonna be the major things that go into a product. So when you look at your phone, look at the metal casing, the, the cameras, the glass on the top, all of those major components are direct materials and would be easy to trace to an individual iPhone, like the radio would be in an automobile. Direct labor would be the wages of the people that are actually putting it together. So these aren't supervisors. These aren't people that are cleaning up the factory floor. These are the people that are literally putting together the phone, gluing the glass on, installing the radio into the automobile. Those costs would be considered direct labor. We could directly trace it to a particular product. All of the other support activities would fall into manufacturing overhead. They can't be traced directly to the finished products, but they are an important part of producing that product. So indirect materials would be like the solder that I mentioned earlier. We can't directly trace it to a specific unit of the product, but it is important if you don't solder in the wires and stuff, the phone won't work. But because it can't be directly traceable, it's considered an indirect material. Likewise, like cleaning supplies that are used to clean the factory would be another example of an indirect material. We need the factory to be cleaned up in order for it to be useful. 
and for us to build our product in it, but we can't directly trace the Windex or whatever is being used, the Clorox, to clean up the factory to an individual product. So it would go into the overhead bucket. Indirect labor costs would be any type of factory related supervisor. So any labor that's involved in the production process, but is not involved directly in making the product. So any supervisor of the factory would be considered an indirect labor cost, as well as support activities like the factory maintenance workers, the factory janitor, uh, they would all be considered indirect labor because they're part of the production process, but they don't actually physically put the product together. The way I think of overhead is it's any cost that's associated with the factory but not directly linked to our product. So blah, 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 factory, where insert anything for blah, 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 and it's most likely going to be a product cost. And if it's not direct materials and direct labor, then it would be overhead. So if it's factory or production related, those are the key words, factory, plant, production, then it's going to be a product cost. And if it's not direct materials or direct labor, then it has to fall under the manufacturing overhead category. In addition to indirect materials and indirect labor, there are other overhead items like the depreciation on the factory equipment, utility costs for the factory, property taxes for the factory, insurance premiums for the factory. Okay, or manufacturing facility. The key is not memorizing that it's a utility cost or a property cost. It's that it relates to the factory or to the production environment. That is the key. Anything factory related is a product cost and it would be part of overhead unless it's a direct material or a direct labor. So again, it says it in the box at the bottom, only those indirect costs associated with operating the factory would be included in overhead. The utility costs for the administrative building or the property taxes for the sales building would not be part of overhead and would not be considered a product cost. Our three product costs, direct materials and direct labor and overhead, can be broken out into two other categories, prime cost and conversion cost. Prime cost is direct materials and direct labor. It's called prime cost because those are the prime components that go into our product. Direct materials and direct labor are the primary components in our product. Then in order to convert direct materials to a final finished good, we need to incur conversion costs. So conversion costs include direct labor and overhead. The only way to convert a direct material to a final product is to add labor and overhead to it. So that's how I remember that labor and overhead are conversion costs because it's how we convert direct materials to a final product. Notice that direct labor is included in both prime and conversion. So you can't add prime and conversion to get total product costs because direct labor is included in both prime and conversion. The three of these added together would be your total product cost. Again, you can't add prime and conversion together to get total product cost because direct labor is double dipping. It's counting for both. So what do we do with all of our costs that aren't associated with the factory or production? Well, those are considered non-manufacturing costs, and they generally fall under one of two categories, either a selling cost or an admin cost. Selling costs would be all of your marketing and commissions costs that are associated with getting the product out the door, enticing customers to buy the product. Administrative costs are the costs associated with supporting the organization, like different executive functions, clerical costs, accounting costs, human resource costs would all be considered administrative costs. These are all non-manufacturing costs. They're not considered part of production. They're not a product cost.